Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Lara May, a clinical pharmacist specializing in functional medicine, as well as a certified yoga teacher and Reiki master. I run a truly integrative health coaching practice, encompassing functional medicine lab testing, yoga and meditation, and a sprinkling of Reiki energy medicine. Join me here on Light Body Radio to break through your health plateau and come into alignment with your natural vitality. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Light Body Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Lara May, and today we have with us Scott Friedman. He is a nationally accredited personal trainer, fitness nutrition coach, and behavior change specialist who has been in the fitness industry for years. He has worked with hundreds of clients and specializes in mentoring them on how to build long-term sustainable habits using his key principles of mindset, motion, and momentum. Scott is a unique and engaging speaker, coach, and host of his own podcast called The Power of Progress. He prides himself on understanding the needs of those who wish to change their lives through storytelling, personal experience, and a refreshingly honest take on the fitness and nutrition industry. Scott empowers and inspires his audiences and clients to take congruent action to achieve their goals. His authentic and grip it and rip it style resonates with people to take practical steps to improve their lives. Welcome, welcome! I'm so happy to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. That's that's it's a it's a great intro. I mean, who wrote that? I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who could have written that. <laughs> so, give us. Um, I always like to start with your story. Like, how did you get to be here and um, being an expert in you know behavioral change and inspiration in the context of you know nutrition coaching and personal training and all of that fantastic stuff. Yeah, for sure. So I, I would say it starts back because I was never, you know, I was a um, a varsity bowler in high school. So as you could probably imagine, I was like the coolest kid on, you know, uh, in high school. I mean, that's just, you know, varsity bowler, you know, coolest kid. So, you know, I wasn't always the most athletic kid, anything like that. I mean, I wasn't into fitness at all. I was always kind of a lean person. Like you could always see like kind of like the skinny six pack. I had some good muscle on my arms. And one year, I think my ju- the uh, middle of my junior year, I started to realize I'm like, oh, maybe it's my sophomore year. Either way, I started to get, kind of get like a little gut, and I was like, ah, I don't, I don't want that. So uh, from a you know a a what, 14 or 15 year old kid perspective, whatever it might be, I'm like, I can't do this. So I start lifting weights, and I first off, I embarrass myself in front of all the upperclassmen that who have been doing this for like a year or two. And I am like the worst in the gym. I have no idea how to do it, but it catches on a little bit. And, you know, fast forward a little bit here and there, and I'm in college and I'm actually in college for physical therapy. My mom is an occupational therapist and she's like, Hey, you should be a physical therapist. Like they make good money. It has something to do with fitness, right? Cause you're helping people rehab and it, it's a good, safe career that you can grow and develop in. I'm like, great. Uh, sophomore year comes around. I hate everything about physical therapy. I hate all the biochem and all phys. It's just like, it's way too complicated for me. (laughs) I am not, I'm like, no, 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 I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I also, I I had no idea. I found out at the time that kinesiology, which is basically exercise science is a degree at my university, Northern Illinois university. So I, I talked to my advisor, I get my major switched over and you know, from there, I started to kind of learn the ins and outs of fitness. Now, uh, before that time, so my my freshman year to that time, I actually had broken my ankle, uh, my like in the first two weeks of of camp, like being on campus. So I literally have no friends. I live on like the fifth floor of a dorm with no elevator. Like it's it's like the worst time of my life. The only safe haven I had was going to the gym every single day for probably two or so hours, maybe even longer. And it only because it took me so long to, to like with my crutches in my boot to like hobble across the gym because it's a college campus gym. So it's massive and I'm trying to work out and people are helping me. But I really found my love of lifting weights at that point. So, I, you know, I broke my ankle. It's all I can really do. And then I started to kind of study this stuff and I got really good at it. I'm like, okay, I can make a career out of being a personal trainer. I'm like, okay, that, that, that'll be my start. I had no idea 
what I was going to do with that. I got my certification before I graduated. I decided that I was going to do part-time personal training work at different locations because uh, I thought I was going to move. I thought it was all these different things. I did part-time because I didn't think I was going to be in Illinois for very long. And turns out I'm still here. So, I mean, I was, I was wrong about that <laughs> one. And uh, I start I trained people. I mean, I trained a lot of people and I found very quickly that my niche on training was uh, the general population was I want to help people who just don't understand the basics, learn the basics, because I think that's where we struggle. It's just like, we're so focused on nuance and all these different things out there that are like, when should I eat this food? What about meal timing? How much protein? How much? It's like, they, they get into all these nuanced parts of fitness. And I just want to really the information as simply as I can. So I started training at commercial gyms, at private uh, corporate fitness centers, at uh, warehouse studios, at weight loss fitness camps, uh, a group instructor. I mean, I was everywhere. But, you know, five, I had five different jobs at the same time, you know, working 16 hour days, being a trainer. And I trained so, uh, you know, a lot of people at that point. And I started to real, and this is where the shift becomes. A lot of people have a very similar story. You want to help people with their fitness results. You want to look good. Like that's why you're a personal trainer. And I started to see this trend and no one was talking about it. You never learn this stuff. You're at a commercial gym. No one talks about it. No, it's just, it's just not a thing. I started to realize that a lot of people don't see results with trainers. And, and, And again, some do, but the second that they're done with the trainer, the results stop. And, and I could do the best job I possibly could, but some people just will not start, will not continue their routine. And then I started to kind of research, okay, the yo, you know, the yo-yo, I call it the yo-yo effect, where you basically go from diet to diet, gaining and losing weight, gaining and losing weight over and over again, mm-hmm. lacking discipline and motivation, not feeling good. So I started to kind of study all this. That's how I got my behavior, uh, behavior change certification to kind of really get into the, the, the deeper stuff. Okay. It's not just about the program. It's not just about people don't know how to do a bicep curl or don't, don't know how to do a push up. It goes a lot deeper than that. And what I found was, that, that no one was really talking about this is that you have to really focus on the pre-fitness aspect of someone, their mental awareness, their mindset of almost how they feel about themselves prior to giving them a, you know, a, a routine that they can follow. Because if they're not comfortable in their own skin and they don't feel like they can do it, they're going to come up with a bunch of different reasons why they won't succeed. And so this is what I have found. And so I've had clients, right? And not everyone has succeeded. And I'll be the first one to say, like, I have not succeeded with every single one of my clients, which not many trainers would admit to doing. But if I were to go back now, it's like every week was just me pounding my head against the wall. Like, why won't you listen to me? Like, you're paying me a good amount of money for me to sit here and count your reps and watch you work out and tell you what to do. And you're not, I'm like, but when I'm not with you, you're, you're eating Krispy Kreme donuts all day long and you're not working out and you're just being unhealthy and you're just not like something's not clicking. And so I think that's a missing piece that I started to realize that if we can shift the the focus of the fitness industry from this salesy, 30 minute fitness sessions, just, you know, build a routine with a trainer and just, and just do it, just do it. And you're going to succeed. Just do it, do it, do it, do it. And maybe reshift that focus to maybe we need to figure out why this is so hard for them in the first place. Not again, not on a cycle, not in like a, a medical level per se, because those are obviously there's medical experts for that, but from a, okay, why is this so complicated? Why is it that you feel you have no time? Why is it that you feel this is so expensive? Why is it that when you're overly stressed out, you decide to go into the cabinet versus going for a workout? Why is it that you think this way and it's causing these results? So I found very early on that there's this this causation here, this, this co- uh, correlation of, okay, if they don't feel, I can give the exact same advice to someone who needs, you know, they need to lose 50 pounds. I can give the perfect advice. And if one person is like, and they just listen to me and just do it and take what I say and run with it and they build up their bodies, they're going to see the, all the results in the world. But that's not most people. Most people need that. There's something missing. I can give them everything they need. I can give them the best program, the best nutrition. And then a week, two, three weeks later, they're good. No, they're good for like a week or two. And then two or three weeks later, it's what happened? Oh, well, you know, I, 
I, you know, something came up. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, you know, whatever it might be. And so that's, that's kind of how I got into this mindset game of, okay, I'm sick of number one, wasting my time and not seeing the results. Because when, when if you're a trainer and you're a coach, you understand very well, like, if your client doesn't see results, you take that very personally, uh, mm-hmm. right or wrong. Like you feel a certain way about it and you want to see results because Otherwise, you feel like you don't know what you're doing, and you have to. Then you self doubt your 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 skill set and your expertise. Like, oh my gosh, like this person should be losing weight, or this person should be doing this, and why is this not happening? And I think if we take a step back and go, okay, maybe it's not the program, maybe it's something prior to the program that we need to address. Maybe we'll see more results that way. And ever since I've done that, I've definitely seen better results by trying to figure out how we can build this routine with people versus just give them these routines, give them this. If I can just figure out what's going on, not necessarily, again, not from a medical level. I, I want to be very clear on that. Not, not within the scope of practice, but yeah. um, from just from, a, okay, why do you feel the way you feel or what motivates you to do this? Or why are you not doing this? How are you feeling self-reflection based, a self-reflection model? If we can get them to open up and self-reflect, we can then iron out why they're doing what they're doing and then address that obstacle, which is basically the reason why you see all these people, they do whatever diets out there, and then the second that structure is gone, they revert back to the mean. And so the reason is the underlying building blocks of what they're trying to do have never been established. And that's why right. I think that, you know, from 2000 to 2022, the obesity rate rose uh, over 12%. And that doesn't actually include COVID. Uh, you know, it's like one in four people in the US right now die from heart disease, which is a direct correlation to obesity. So, I mean, we're not we're not winning the battle. And we have all these, we have all this technology. We're not winning the battle. So that's kind of my shift on the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, so let's see. Okay. Well, so you brought up a lot, which I really, I want to unpack. No, it's good. Um, so how I like when that you brought up, like people are motivated, they get going, but then something happens and they fall off and then they don't come back. So what is that about? Like, what is that, um, break about, you know, like, have you figured that out or like, what is your approach? to helping people not have that complete like fall off and maybe be a little bit more consistent. Yeah, absolutely. So if I figured out the exact, you know, you know, neurological, you know, biomechanical reason, no, obviously I'm not, I'm not a doctor or anything <laughs> like that. I haven't studied that, but from a, uh, you know, my main focus is, okay, we have to build habits and we have to build discipline. I think if you can do those two things, uh, which is much easier said than done, of course, then you can see consistent results. So I think one reason that people fall off after, you know, two weeks of a program or a month or even after, you know, even after three months, whatever it is, is we live in a world right now, in my opinion, that is instant gratification. You know, and look at every social media app, you know, you get these little buttons that, that lighten up and you have to click on it and you post pictures and you need everyone to like it right away. You're checking your phone constantly. So we're very instant gratification, everything that we do. And we, so we, we would take that and we go, okay, well, same thing with fitness. If I'm doing push ups for a few days, well, I'm not seeing any results. You don't see results, which causes this negative thought process to, oh, is this working? Is this like, and then you start to kind of go back to your old habits and then you give up. It's kind of a, and that's a very, you know, uh, the skeleton model of why that happens, but people think that they need to be motivated this whole time. And in reality, motivation is fleeting. Motivation is great that, to get you started, but people tend to rely on motivation for their energy source way past when it's already expired. If I, I actually tell my clients, motivation is like an ex, an ex significant other like there's it's toxic you don't want it don't even go near motivation it's all about <laughs> discipline is a loving beautiful relationship motivation is is not it, it's that it's that bar at two in the morning and you know you got to go home and like go home like don't 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 stay the night so motivation i think that's the second thing so motivation is the second thing is people rely on motivation to keep them going and the second they don't feel motivated they will tell themselves Oh, like this isn't worth it. Or, you know, the, the brain will come up with different reasons of why they won't succeed or why they won't do this. And then they'll, they'll stop because, oh, well, you know, whatever. And they tell themselves, Hey, this, it's okay. They, they change their mind completely because now they're feeling completely different than they were before. It's easy to do anything you want to do in the world when you are motivated. And I think motivation is so fleeting in fitness because the second you don't see results, 
you're like next buy. That's why you go from diet to diet to diet, from coach to coach to coach, and you stop for six months. Oh, I gotta get back in there. Or oh, I gotta do, and that's why because we rely on motivation versus discipline, and we're also looking for that instant gratification. So I think those are two mm-hmm. pretty good thing reasons why people give up early. There, I think there's a lot more, um, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. If you're I mean, you could also go into neurologically. We're we're programmed to, to think a certain way um, to unpack all that. Right. Um, so there's a lot there. Yeah. Those are two easy. Yeah, to- no, I was actually going to bring that up, like in terms of, and because I think it'd be interesting for people to um, hear it, you know, played out a little. So you know, like even though all the bad habits and all the you know bad decisions and bad behavior have gotten us to where we are at this point, saying like we're looking to lose weight, get in shape, whatever it is, you know, look good in that dress for this event coming up or, you know, look good in a bathing suit, whatever it is. Maybe it is just getting that number on a scale. Whatever your reason, your why is, everything that you've done so far has gotten to that point. It's also created patterns of neurons in your brain that are used to certain reward cycles. And so this is what your brain knows our brains are programmed to keep us safe and alive, not necessarily healthy, but alive. A hundred percent. (laughs) Yes. And so somehow our brains still haven't gotten, you know, like those, the, they call it the, like the lizard reptilian brain, that survival Mm -hmm. brain that, you know, it doesn't, that's what doesn't convert is that the good habits are going to, you know, get you healthy and keep you healthy but you have to create those new circuit pathways of those, the new good healthy habits. And that's why I think people just revert back because it's, it's an unconscious. I really think it's an unconscious choice and behavior that like, they're like, Oh, I missed one workout. Oh, now I've missed two workouts. Well, now what's the point? Mm-hmm. And then they, yeah. because their brain is just reverting back to what it thinks is safe. But like you just said, obesity is not safe and we are in no way shape or form fat shaming here on this show at all but people need to be honest about the risks of obesity especially the long-term risk it is deadly it's no joke and so but i love what you said at the beginning about loving being in a place of self-love um i wrote it down about you know at the beginning or so you said like it's almost like people won't love themselves until they have their version of the perfect body or their, you know whatever it is but really what i think keeps us going and coming back to the gym and coming back to those healthy habits is creating that self love where we are right now like maybe we're overweight right now that's okay at least we're aware of it and we can make choices and decisions to change it mm-hmm. and choosing to love ourselves right now which will help support us through those challenging times. And, and that's a lot of um, why I focus on mindset as my first pillar. I focus on mindset as my first pillar because that, that I think that's the most important thing. So like you said, like I think it's until you're like you, from z- the age zero to seven, um, from what I understand that we are in this brainwave thing called theta. And in theta brainwaves, when you're up to seven years old, everything that you believe everything that you're told and i think a lot of people um you know are told very not great things or they start to develop who they are at that point and if someone tells you you're not good enough or you're not this or santa is real all that stuff is the same for your brain as a child and then you start developing these internal programs um and then what happens is as you get older in life that you don't understand why you're doing what you're doing because it was developed when you were younger. So when you're someone who doesn't understand why you're a hundred pounds away and you just can't lose it, you have to go back to, okay, you, you have to create new programs in your body because clearly the programs that you have have led you to where you are. And so what, what I teach my clients, and this is why mindset's first is, okay, what is your reason why? We have to crack down on what this is because I want to create I think there's two important things to create new habits or or to to achieve goals in life. One is you need to have um, uh, an emotional attachment to what you're going to do. And two is intent. I think those two things together are the way that you change your life, whether it's fitness or any field, really anything you want to do. 
a positive emotional reaction. It could be negative, I guess, but I I not I wouldn't tell you to do that. Uh, and then <laughs> intent about it. So your reason why is positive. I could ask you, okay, why do? Because most people say they want to lose fifty pounds, but why? But ser- like seriously, why do you want to do it? And I have them write down as at least twenty, but as many reasons why. It could be family health. It could be I want to look good with my shirt off. It could be I want to look good in this dress. It could be. X, Y, it doesn't matter. As long as it's important to you, um, I want to live longer. I want to feel better, higher quality of life, okay, right? So as long as it's important to you, write down your why's. And then even go further, okay, why are those important to you? Why do you want to live a longer life? Because I want to be around for my kids when I have kids. I want to be around for my grandkids. I, and you can dig deep and, and figure out why someone feels that they, the way they feel. Once you can figure out, once they can realize and, and really self-reflect on why they want to achieve their 30-pound weight loss or whatever it might be in their, their goal in their life, then once you have that emotional connection, it's a lot easier to create intent, Right now, it's a lot easier. Okay, here's why you're going to go to the gym four days a week. Here's why you're going to start eating because this is the reason you told me that you want to, you know, live longer because of X, Y, and Z, and that creates that emotional attachment. So I think a lot of people don't. They just kind of willy nilly say, "Oh, I want to do this," and don't understand that. Like, if you are were not, you are where you are because of the programs in your brain from when you were younger, and unless you mm-hmm. change those. You're going to continue to be where you are. And the best, in my mind, the best way to change that is to create new, like you talked about, new programs, new neurological pathways. And that is by creating an emotional response and then creating congruent action through that emotional response. So that's why mindset's my first pillar, my first principle. That's why I talk about on my podcast. Like you got to change your mindset. Now, again, it's not easy. I'm not saying, I'm not saying go look in the mirror and just tell yourself, you know, you're great, you're great, you're great. Cause if you're lying to yourself, you're gonna know it's not true. Right. But you can't lie yeah. to yourself. That that's also another a, a caveat to what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's um especially in the self-help world, uh, that's missed a lot. You know, like there's talk about mantras and affirmations and that's and all of those things. And all of those things are powerful, but if you're not feeling congruent with those things as you're saying them then it's not going to be as effective as if you come into alignment with, you know, who is that person that you want to be? Because usually, like you said, people want to lose 50 pounds. But again, what does that mean? It's that again, that's just a number on the scale, you know, go deeper, tell, Mm -hmm. you know, figure out your why. And then from my perspective, because I also work with mindset a lot, and even, you know, energy medicine, which is a little bit more esoteric, but you know, energetically speaking, you come into alignment, you practice that vibration. And the more you practice that vibration, you start to become familiar Mm -hmm. with what it feels like. What other thoughts am I thinking? Like there's all these other awarenesses that open up for you when you just sort of take that first step into asking that why. I think it's super powerful. I love, I love that you're, you're doing that with your clients. Yeah. And, and I've, I found that, it, you know, I get better results from doing them that way. I think they get better results at, at a minimum, you know, that they, they at least are able to self-reflect and create that emotional attachment. Now, again, it takes a lot of work. It, it's not like it's something that just happens and you do it one time and it takes a lot. I mean, for example, I, you know, something that one of my goals this year was I want to meditate. Like I want to meditate um, all the time, like every day for 20, you know, for 10 to 30 minutes, whatever it might be. And I have to, you know, force myself to do it. And there were weeks, weeks where I just would stop. And I'm like, why did I stop? Because I was telling myself a story and like, I I had to change those habits and change those patterns. Mm -hmm. And my mindset was the thing holding me back. Oh, this is stupid. Oh, I don't need to do this. Oh my God. I'm not. And the first time you meditate, by the way, like it's it's very similar to the first time you go to the gym, it sucks. Like it's, it's like you're sitting there very uncomfortable and you're like, (laughs) your mind, you're like, why am I thinking about dinosaurs from the few, it's like what, like your mind goes everywhere. Like that was a fight I had thirty years ago. Like why did I? And it's it's so funny where your mind goes. But as you, and same thing with the gym, right? You know, I don't know how to use this. I don't know how to do this. And you, as you do it over and over again, because repetition creates habit as well, and it creates those new pathways in your brain that allow you to kind of you know get rid of the old ones. As you do it over and over again, you get better. You start to see better results. But the the key, the caveat there is, it's not instant gratification. This is not, you're not going to be motivated every night. I mean, I'm not, after working a 10 hour day and doing a whole bunch of stuff, I get home at 7 p.m. I got to eat dinner and I have to wake up at five the next morning. I got to, med- I'm like, I don't want, I just want to go to bed. I don't want to meditate. I don't want to do any of this. I'm not motivated. 
but I'm building those habits to do it. Same thing with the gym, same thing with your career, same thing with your relationship. You have to build those habits to do it and then change, you know, focus on, okay, how, what am I thinking about? How am I thinking? Uh, you know, is this helping me? Is this not helping me? And I think that's a very powerful way to do it versus just, Hey, Oh, what diet is that? Okay. And I'm not bashing any specific diet, but Oh, that's keto. Let me do that. Let me have you tell me what to do and I'll just do it. You might get great results, but there's this actually, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the the biggest loser where, mm-hmm. you know, national phenomenon, all these people on the show losing 60, 70, 100, 200 pounds. Well, in a, in a very short amount of time, almost a crash diet. Well, what they found like after the fact was basically it's like 75, 80% of all the contestants not only gained all their weight back within like five years, they, some of them gained even more weight. And because of the way they lost their weight and how dramatic it was, they actually hurt their body and their metabolism. So now they're actually burning less calories now. But you would think you're on national TV. You have some of the quote unquote greatest coaches in the world pushing you. You saw all these results. It's great. And then what happens? They didn't build any habits. Their mindset never changed. Yeah, we could all do what we're told to do for a few months and lose some weight. But what happens when that's over? And that's what I want people to change. I want people to ha- be basically you have a coach one time and then you're you're able to use that and then build off of that for the rest of your life and not have to keep spending money on different coaches, different stuff and, and really good and be the master of your own be, be the master of your own fitness, be your own trainer um, and really understand how important it is to be healthy again. If you don't want to lose weight and you're comfortable in your body, this isn't for you, right? If you're comfortable, that's fine. But let's not confuse being comfortable with scientifically proven it is unhealthy to be at a certain weight and it, it you will have a higher longevity, a higher quality of life if you are at a more appropriate weight or again, building or building more muscle. There's, there's studies show, studies show science has basically proven that the more muscle you build, the, the, the healthier you're going to be, the better your bone density is, all the different stuff. So uh, there's, I mean, it's one of the few things that's pretty non-controversial is work out, lift weights, and you're going to be a lot better in your life. Yeah. And I would just like to say too, especially for all, you know, the beautiful women out there that, you know, we're our body compositions are all different Mm -hmm. and you know some of us are tall some of us are short some of us are a little more stocky and but the most important thing is you know that that muscle tone that um body composition because you know we've all heard of this the term skinny fat and, and that's essentially someone that's super thin but they don't have a lot of muscle tone. And really, you know, if you did a blood work on them, most likely their blood work would show all sorts of inflammation showing that, you know, even though they're skinny, they're still not quote unquote healthy or well, maybe we should use the word well, um, because, you know, well means without illness. So um, I think it's important to be realistic about where we are with, with our body types and, you know, Again, this comes back to an aspect of self-love and acceptance. And, you know, it's like, I'm never going to look like a supermodel and that's perfectly fine, but that doesn't mean that I can't be strong and have good cardiovascular endurance and, you know, like bring down my cardiovascular risk and have better bone density. You know, weight, lifting weights is one of the best ways that women can build bone mm-hmm. density and prevent yes. osteoporosis later on in life. And honestly, if you've waited till you're 40, you've waited too long. Like lifting weights should be preached more to women, I think. And and I'm lucky because I was a competitive swimmer my entire life. So I started lifting weights in high school and thank goodness I did. And like, and also learned along the way with all of my, you know, education along the way about what a good thing it was instead of, you know, getting caught up in this, oh, I don't want to be bulky, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's because you can lift weights and be strong without being bulky. And really to me, like strong is, is the new beautiful strong is the new healthy. Um, and that also means strong in your mental capacity too, strong in your resilience. And what I also think is not really talked about enough in the fitness world is what kind of mental strength and resilience comes with committing to a regimen of, you know, pushing your body a few times a week. Um, you know, yoga is fantastic. I love yoga. I'm a yoga teacher myself. Um, Meditation is amazing. I meditate every day. But we also need to put ourselves a little bit out of our comfort zone, you know, a few times a week 
to really, you know, remind our body that it needs to keep growing and it needs to keep changing. What do you think about that? Yeah, I 100% agree. You know, I think that, you know, one, you have to, you have to separate out being healthy and quote unquote, having this sexy, ridiculous body. There's not necessarily what we're talking about, like how you look and how you feel like you have to self-love, like you're going to have to like, like your body. Again, we could always, you know, you could always want to improve, but at the same time, appreciate where you're at. So I think a lot of people look at met first off every magazine, every celebrity, it's just not like, like, or Instagram pictures. Those are snapshots of, of a one second of a one frame video and all these private chefs and all these steroid users. It's just like, you know, live your life and be appreciative of what you have. And then, yeah, you should try and grow, try and get better, but like, don't try and don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to what you yeah. want to be because you're not competing with them. They have a different life with you. They have a different thing. Like, oh, this person, who cares? Like you have a different life. You have a different journey. So you need to have that self-love and and really understand kind of what you're going for. On the other note of, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest myth of all time has been women will get bulky when they lift. And it's like, well, it's actually the opposite. Uh, just hormonally, it's completely different. Uh, men and women have different hormones. And um, what happens when, you know, women lift weights, like you said, like their chance of disease goes significantly down and they don't, there's not this bulk camp. When you want to tone, quote unquote, when you want to get definition, when you want to have, you know, the legs that are, you know, oh, those shoulders, those whatever it is that you want, that's lifting weights. That And, and there's nothing wrong with lifting weights. I, you know, some of my, you know, best friends who are training girls, like, they're lifting heavy weights and some of them heavier than me and they're that bulky. They, they look great. It's okay. Like that's what they're trying to do. So I think one of it is, yeah, your mental toughness. And it's when you figure out your why and when you can commit to yourself, I think that makes it a lot easier to mentally stay in tune with, okay, like even though it's hard, even though that it's 5.30 a.m. in the dead of winter in Chicago and it's zero degrees, I'm going to warp my car, you're going to keep pushing forward because you have built that that almost a calloused mind of like, hey, I'm just going to keep doing it over and over again because you're going to see results. And as you make those mindset changes because of the emotional attachment, you're going to see physical results if you just keep putting the work. And don't be afraid to do that. Cause as, as you know, as you said, uh, lifting weights is great. Lifting weights is the number one thing I recommend for everyone. I don't, I do, I don't actually recommend like jumping on a cardio machine or doing hours of cardio. That's not the way to, you know, to look and feel your best. A cardio is great for you know, your heart. Okay. I would not use cardio as a way to burn necessarily burn more calories. Again, you can do it in one off sets, but when you use cardio in the right way, such as heart health and, and, and lowering your, you know, your resting heart rate, lowering all these different things, you're going to be so much healthier, have so much more energy, feel so much more impactful about your life, live higher quality, and you'll be able to do more and you'll be able to do much more and you're going to feel so much better about it. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell everyone where they can find your website, work with you, all the good things. Also your podcast. Yeah. Uh, I'm not very many places. I mean, so the podcast is the power of progress, your know, iTunes, Spotify, all the major stuff. Uh, and then, uh, the website is scottspeaksfitness.com. So that's pretty easy to follow. And on there, um, I also do some free coaching calls. So there's, you know, if there's ever a 30 minute conversation to help you take some actionable items that's on the website as well. And then Instagram is just Scott Freeman 24. So pretty easy, not all over the place. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I loved having you on and your perspective and what you're doing. And I think let's just finish up by saying real quick, like, yes, exercise gives you physical benefits, but let's talk about just real quick, if we can, I don't know how much time we have left, just like maybe two minutes, maybe, but um, the emotional benefits, like we're going to feel better oh my gosh. In, our, in our minds, in our head space, like working out, it, you know, it's true that it, you, you, give off endorphins when you work out, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, the endorphin release is unbelievable. I mean, you're going to, if you've ever having a bad day, just I'll leave it with this as basic as I can. I've had so, like, when I'm done with a nine, 10 hour day, the last thing I want to do, and I'm a, and I'm in the field, is I want to work out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I do not want to do this. I want to go home. I want to sit on the couch. I want to watch one more episode of whatever the show is of the week and be done. <laughs> but if I can just push myself to get moving, just, just to physically, just even if it's a, a five to 10 minute walk, your entire mind, your entire mental you know status is going to change. 
your, whatever argument you had, whatever your boss said to you, whatever your friend said to you, however, whatever the annoyances are in your life, it is all going to fade and go significantly lower. And you're going to feel so much better. You're going to bring, you're going to give off uh, positive vibes. You're going to feel positive. You're going to feel so much better. And it's like, wow, like I'm not as stressed. I'm not as angry. I don't have as much anxiety. I don't like, I feel better. And you're going to, and that's when you work out, you know, every time you work out, you're going to get that feeling every single time. And as you do it more and more and more, it becomes more a part of you. And you you feel that more on a regular basis. I recommend that if you're ever in a bad day, bad mood, whatever, work out, even a 20 minute brisk walk, you're going to feel light years better just by doing that. That's all you can do. It'll, it'll make you feel unbelievable. And yeah, it does release happiness, hormones and all that different stuff. It releases a lot of stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Well, again, thank you so much. And make sure to check out Scott's podcast and head on over to his website and uh, see what all of the fabulous things he's doing in the world. Thanks, everyone. We'll catch you on the next episode.